The Yoshi's Island series has been around for a pretty long time now, almost 30 years in fact, and in that time, players have had to face foes ranging from crazy daisies in Yoshi's Island, tiny flowers who run around singing and dancing until Yoshi smashes them into mulch, to the staple enemy of the Mario series, the Bullet Bills, and all coming together with the recurring villain Baby Bowser, who is definitely not Bowser Jr., and sometimes grows giant, or creates giant mechs, in order to fight Yoshi. But out of all of the dangerous and not so dangerous foes present in Yoshi's rogues gallery, the worst of them all is the frustrating, the infuriating, the incredibly disorientating... Fuzzies. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Science Sub, where today, we will be taking a look at Yoshi's Island and one of its most notorious enemies, the Fuzzies. These frustrating enemies only appeared in one game in the whole Yoshi franchise, the very first Yoshi's Island title, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island for the Super Nintendo, and then later in the 2002 remake for the Game Boy Advance. This game tells the story of how Yoshi took care of Mario when he was a baby, admittedly making the number of Yoshi sacrifices in Super Mario World just a bit grimmer. Out of the 48 levels in the original game, they only appeared in three. Touch Fuzzy Get Dizzy, Go Go Mario, and Beware of the Spinning Logs. Although Fuzzies don't directly attack Yoshi and cause him to drop Baby Mario, like so many other enemies do, it does have other visual indications of the damage it causes. This is because Fuzzies can't be killed by Yoshi. As soon as Yoshi touches or attempts to swallow a Fuzzy to turn it into an egg, he becomes intoxicated for about 18 seconds. During this period, Yoshi's eyes widen, his pupils dilate, and the world becomes a multicoloured wave, which makes it incredibly difficult for Yoshi to make it through the level, staggering around with the ground raising and lowering around him. But what causes these effects? If we're going to try and establish what the fuzzies are and how they cause Yoshi to fall into this intoxicated state, we first need to establish what kind of organism the fuzzies are. And to do this, we need to look at what their habitats are. The fuzzies look like large airborne cotton balls and are found throughout many areas of Yoshi's Island, from the wide plains to the shade of the jungle floors to the deep caves found throughout the game's worlds. The presence of these enemies in jungles would suggest that the fuzzies are plant seeds, like those you'd see on a dandelion. However, if they were, then they wouldn't be able to thrive as well in darker areas due to a lack of sunlight not allowing them to photosynthesize. Fungi, however, can definitely survive in these darker areas, and we see this in the game, where a variety of different kinds of mushrooms in a wide range of colours are found throughout Yoshi's Island's cave levels. From small and stocky cat mushrooms with spots, to thinner, wide cat mushrooms which are used as platforms. We even see the fuzzies and these platforms together in World 6 Level 3, Beware the Spinning Logs, and in the fourth secret level of the remake for the GBA, Fight Toadies with Toadies, where we see them inside a crystal filled cave. Although many would consider fungi as being very similar to plants, genetically they're actually in their own separate phylogenetic group. Phylogenetics is the study of evolutionary relationships between biological organisms, and we can break down these relationships into eight distinct classifications. Domains, kingdoms, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and finally, species. When we look at plants and fungi, we see that they both belong to the same domain, eukarya, which contains all eukaryotic cells. They diverge at the next barrier, with plants and fungi having their own distinct kingdoms. Within the fungal kingdom, there are two distinct types of fungi, unicellular and filamentous. The unicellular fungi are single-celled organisms which are generally grouped together as yeasts. They consist of the same organelles that I discussed during the video on Solosis last week. The filamentous fungi have a coenocytic structure, like the Valonia ventricosa mentioned in the last video. These fungi form moulds, which eventually produce more traditional fungi in the forms of mushrooms and toadstools. When looking at fuzzies, we can see that they're airborne, which suggests that they're filamentous fungi, which often reproduce by releasing airborne spores. Most unicellular fungi reproduce by one of two processes, budding or binary fusion. These are both forms of cell division, with the main difference being that in budding, a new yeast cell is formed through mitotic cell division and remains attached to the original cell until it matures and becomes independent. In binary fission, two identical individuals are formed. However, unlike with budding, the new cell isn't formed as a bud. Instead, the nucleus splits by mitosis. During this, the chromosomes in the nucleus split apart into two sets of chromatids, which are then pulled apart into two new nuclei by spindle fibers. Following this, the cell elongates as the cytoplasm divides into two. Before the cell splits, a new dividing wall is formed down the middle of the cell called a septum these cells are surrounded by a cell wall as well as a cell membrane, which will also need to be replicated before the cell divides. Once this is formed, the septum splits down the middle, releasing the two cells. 
When we look at fuzzies, we also see that they appear to have many hair-like tendrils connected to a central body. These fine hair-like tendrils on the fuzzies are reminiscent of fungal mycelium. The mycelium is white because it's found underground and as such has no need for light absorbing organelles. It may look like cotton, but they're actually formed of a network of fungal hyphae. These are incredibly thin and branching filaments, having a diameter of between 4 and 6 micrometers. The hyphae are made up of many plant cells containing a nuclei, mitochondria, Golgi bodies and vacuoles, which were all discussed in the previous video. These cells are joined together by a cell wall called the septum. These septa have large pores which allow for the movement of certain organelles between cells. So that's the structure of the fuzzies, but why do they cause Yoshi to become intoxicated? Well, the impact that the fuzzies have on Yoshi has been called similar to the intoxicating impact of many psychoactive fungi. Now, if we were to suggest that fuzzies are psychoactive, this means that they produce a chemical substance which changes the brain's function and will result in alteration of many behaviours. There are many chemicals which, if consumed, can cause psychoactive effects, including caffeine and alcohol. One such chemical is psilocybin. Psilocybin, or to give its needlessly complicated IUPAC name, 32-dimethylaminoethyl-1H-indol-4-il-dihydrogen phosphate, is an extremely common psychedelic chemical which is produced by over 200 species of fungi. This chemical produces many effects similar to the effects of the fuzzy enemies have in Yoshi's in-game. These effects include the pupil dilation seen in Yoshi, as well as the instability and dysmetria. This explains why Yoshi has trouble walking when he comes into contact with this enemy. When Yoshi touches one of these fuzzy spores, time seems to slow down, with the music slowing down significantly. Here's the original. And here's the version when Yoshi is on spores. Now, you might think that's impossible. When looking at a study on the effect that psilocybin had upon perceptual distortion by Mark Whitman in 2006, it was found that psilocybin had a definite impact upon humans' perception of time. In this study, he had three groups of human test subjects. One was given a placebo, one was given a low dosage of about 150 micrograms per kilogram, and one was given a high dosage of about 250 micrograms per kilogram. These test subjects were given three tasks to perform to test the integrity of their neuromuscular system. The first task was a test where subjects had to reproduce interval durations of increasing lengths. The second task was a test to examine subjects' abilities to synchronise to interbeat intervals. And a third task was a tapping rate test. A test which evaluates the tapping speed of fingers and the time taken between each tap. From this study, it was shown that compared to a control group, those treated with psilocybin performed significantly worse in all three tests. There are more serious adverse effects caused by taking psilocybin, such as changes in blood pressure and heart rate, which can lead to hypo or hypertension, which in turn can lead to a heart attack. Now, before we go further into how psilocybin causes Yoshi's intoxication, it's important to point out that psilocybin cannot reach the brain through touch alone. So, although Yoshi swallowing them like other enemies should definitely result in intoxication, just touching the fuzzies or running into them isn't going to be enough for Yoshi to experience psychoactive effects. Even if the fungi were to release spores and they were inhaled, that would not affect Yoshi as fungal spores do not contain psilocybin. So what happens when Yoshi ingests the psilocybin? When psilocybin enters the body, it's inactive. Upon being ingested and then digested, it's converted into its active form, which is a chemical called psilocin. This lipid-soluble chemical is then absorbed into the bloodstream through the intestine, which distributes it all around the body. From there, it can reach all areas, including the brain. Now, although psilocin and other hallucinogens have complex pharmacology and can affect multiple different receptors on the brain, it has been found that psilocin has a high affinity for a serotonin 2A receptors. These receptors are key targets for a range of psychoactive chemicals such as psilocin due to its similar chemical structure to serotonin. The serotonin receptors are found throughout the brain, but particularly in areas of the limbic system, which has a crucial function in motivation, emotion, learning and memory, which may be the reason behind time slowing down in-game. Furthermore, it's been found that serotonin in the spinal cord plays an important role in motor control, which could explain why Yoshi staggers when he comes into contact with fuzzies. It's the psilocin getting into his system, travelling to the spinal cord and interacting with the serotonin receptors, causing him to lose some of his motor skills. So yeah, it turns out that throughout Yoshi's Island, all of the Yoshi and Baby Mario are exposed to psychoactive fungi, which causes Yoshi to experience effects synonymous with psilocin. Dilated pupils, significantly worse motor skills seen for his stumbling, 
an impaired ability to discern spaces of time shown through the slowed down music, and if he inhales enough, more than likely a myocardial infarction. Yoshi's Island, just another Nintendo game full of innocent family fun. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then like and subscribe. And tell me if there's anything you'd like to see me cover in future videos down below. But until then, this has been the Science of Fuzzies, and I'll see you next time.